Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Today, there's going to be a pair of wide receivers looking to make big plays on the field. It's Hilton's Colts going up against Hopkins' Texans. For the call, let's send you out to the broadcast booth where we'll join our commentators, Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, thank you very much. It's the National Football League presented by EA Sports. They do it big here in Houston, and a second ago, it was a Texas-sized welcome for their hometown guys. They're fired up and ready to go as they get set to match up with the Indianapolis Colts. Hello, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon God. As we get set here, Charles, we talk about wide receivers. You know, Larry mentioned it in the open, but that's a big spot to look at here in this one. I think he identified it perfectly because these guys have such an impact on the game nowadays because they throw the ball more than ever. And whether they're throwing it short, medium, or long, can they snatch it out of the air and create even extra yardage with run after catch? Is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This is taken at the three. And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25 yard line. Now, as the Indianapolis Colts and Jacoby Brissett come out there, we talk about how Brissett just hasn't had a lot of time in the pocket. We mentioned last week he had. 10 sacks against him when they played Jacksonville week seven this last week against Cincy four sacks but he can't seem to get comfortable back there. Yeah four sacks sounds a lot better than being sacked 10 times yeah. but to your point about not being able to get comfortable the Bengals also hit him an additional seven times while he was in the pocket so it is tough he still ended up 25 of 39 throwing the football so he's pretty accurate when he does get a chance to fling it downfield 233 yards two touchdowns and interception but they've got to find a way to protect him better they need some help on the offensive line. Now the first carry here for Frank Gore. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. And this offense sometimes is predicated on the ageless wonder, Frank Gore. And he wants to be a guy with limitless carries. Frank Gore gets better and better with each carry. Really batters defenses with his inside running. Second down following the run. Let's go. Another carry now for Gore. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. He'll pick up only a yard there, and it'll leave him with a third and seven. And a look now at the defense for Houston. Jonathan Joseph is that wily veteran that you hunt on your team at all times. He's great in the locker room, fantastic on the field. And if you're a young guy, just watch how he prepares. What is he doing to combat old age? Pilates and yoga. That's extending <laughs> his career, making him more flexible, and still that guy who can go out there and cover the elite receivers in the NFL. A tough spot here on their opening drive. This is third and seven. Play fake, Brissett. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. A good pick up there, a 22. They had two tight ends in the formation on that when it looked to me like he had his pick of receivers downfield. I think he was just planning on going over the middle. That's what he did. Picked up first down, too. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. Here we go. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. It's caught, Kamar Aiken. And he'll be down deep in Houston territory. Give him 30 yards there. Now that play will end up on the highlights and you'll see it all over the place. But what you won't see 
the offensive line that bought the extra time that allowed for the big completion downfield. Those guys made that play possible. And the defense with their backs against the wall a little bit here as the offense is in the red zone. First down, it's score. And he's going to push his way down to about the 12. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. So last week for Frank Gore, just had the carry there, Charles. Against Cincinnati, he became the ninth player to go over 17,000 yards from scrimmage for his career. I've talked about this before, and you're probably sick of me saying it, but to think that I was calling some of his high school games mm. and to see where he is now, not that I ever question the talent, he went through a number of injury issues with knees. The idea is that he has some kind of longevity and production. One of the best players out there, in fact, a former GM in the league said that when he evaluated ball players, he always said, how would he rank with Frank Gore? And if he ranked him well, then that was high praise. That's how he evaluated guys when he decided he wanted to draft them. His passing's been on point on this drive, hasn't it? Been very accurate, gotten the ball downfield, gained nice chunks of yardage. But now, in this situation, the field is really condensed, partner. So if he's going to throw the football, it has to be pinpoint here. Uh, so I was going to ask you about that. Field shrinks, has to be sharper, but it's been a good opening drive so far. Now they just want to see if they can cap it off with the bell ringer and put it in the end zone. Let's go! They'll try and push it in with Gore. And now running right through it. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. It'll be a three-yard pickup, and it brings up second and goal. Well, it's been the air game that's taken them down on this drive before they finally turned around and handed it off on the last play. And now they're looking for the big boys to get him in the end zone. Couldn't do it there. It'll be interesting to see. Offensive lines had to pass block a lot on this drive. Will they be able to revert and fire out and create some space in the run game? They'll run with Mack. And he takes it in for a Colts score. A great play there. Taking it in. And the Colts take it right down and score on the opening drive. That's just a solid, methodical drive to start this game. And how about how it culminated? Doing exactly what they wanted to do, getting the ball downfield, and then running it into the end zone. I'm just telling you, partner, when you run it in rather than throw it in, that hurts the defense psychologically a heck of a lot more. Now Adam Vinatieri for the point after. And this is good to make it 7-0 Indy. So that one, an eight-play drive, it spans 75 yards. And it culminates in an Indianapolis touchdown. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the inline. So out come the Texans for their opening drive. They're led out by their 6'4 quarterback, the former Pitt Panther, Tom Savage. And Tom Savage is one of those guys that when you look at him, you see the potential that's there. You get a chance to watch him practice and see him throw the football. But he hasn't had many chances to play in games. And you just wonder, if given a full shot, what exactly would it look like? Now a first carry for Lamar Miller. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Yeah, that was the safety that came through and made the play, but there's no doubt in my mind 
he hits like a linebacker, and we see a lot of that in today's NFL, don't we? And that time, we do indeed a big hit for a loss. Again, it's Miller. Nowhere to go that time. Might have gotten a yard up to the 25. Well, this offense for Houston had a big game, albeit in the loss to Seattle. Deshaun Watson threw for over 400 yards, Charles, so those yards had to be going somewhere. Where did they go? Well, they went to DeAndre Hopkins and Will Fuller, as you might expect. I mean, you talk about Fuller being a flat-out flyer. Five catches, 125 yards, and two touchdowns. And DeAndre Hopkins is the number one receiver for the Houston Texans. He proved it yet again. Eight catches, 224 yards, and a touchdown, including a real long one that came from Deshaun Watson. Throwing on third down, it's Savage. And he finds his man, Griffin. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. Give him 17 on the pick up there, and the Texans also get a new set of downs. I know at the end of games, coaches always tell us that no one play won or lost a game. But this seems pretty important early, doesn't it? Their, their ability to pick up that first down on third down, I thought that was key. Well, you're already in the hole after the touchdown on the other side. How will you respond? We talk about that a lot, and they responded pretty well there. You go three and out, I think you give up a lot of momentum. You get down two scores, could be an entirely different game. So they've got a nice drive going now. They're in good shape. What's interesting to me is they're also in that spot of the field where you would take a shot. Do you change that up just because you're down a touchdown? The catch made by DeAndre Hopkins. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Second down, here's Savage setting up the screen for Miller. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. Time to give a little credit here. That was an excellent read by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Oh, you're crediting your defense. Got to credit them on that one because they tried to fool him, right? Tried to trick him, ran a screen, and they went to it and smothered it for a loss of yardage. Third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Now let's go! Again throwing, it's Savage. And he's got Miller. They get six on the pick up there as the drive will continue. I don't think it's a surprise they're throwing the football early. We expected that. They told us they were going to come out firing the fourth for four on the opening drive. They like that. <laughs> they don't just like it, they love it because now, Everyone gets locked in. Your confidence jumps up. Everyone's easy about what they're doing out there. And by the way, they're looking at the sidelines thinking to themselves and expressing, let's keep throwing it. We're doing pretty well. Offense comes to the line now, first and 10. Let's go! Green, now some movement Green, before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. They expect this from the visiting team when playing indoors, but not the home team. They're supposed to get all the advantages, right? The home crowd's supposed to help them. They forgot where they were, perhaps. So now first and 15. After the penalty, it's Miller. And he'll get this into enemy territory, but not by much as he's down to the 48. They get one yard back there to make it second and 14. And let's go through the starting defense for Indianapolis. One of the things that distinguishes Vontae Davis at corner is his size. A big, strong, physical player. Can jam receivers at the line of scrimmage, but he also has the agility to run downfield with them. But when you think about him overall, strength is the thing that makes him one of the better corners in the league. 
Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. To throw on second down is Savage. And this would complete to Will Fuller. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. The reception good for seven. It's third down. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helps to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. So it's third and six, and this will be the eighth play of the drive. the gun here's Savage and he's got the completion to Hopkins and he gets it to the 32 good enough for a first down nine yards on the pickup there and it keeps the drive alive nice job keeping that opening drive alive and they're in plus territory that part of the field where you really want to convert on third down they did big time pickup for them and now I think the aggressive play callers think to themselves, this part of the field, I take my shot at the end zone. Because the closer you get to the end zone, the field can, gets condensed. It makes it a lot tougher to run those routes. You still got a chance to actually run past people right now. Take your shot at the end zone early in the down and distance count. They go back to the ground now with Miller. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the lot of scrimmage, and that's it. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because really they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. On second down, here's Miller. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. He lost four there, and it's third down. Count me as a little bit surprised by what we just saw there because this has been a pretty long drive. And normally you think that wears down a defense. In this case, it looked like the offensive line let them down a little bit. Yeah, allowed the penetration and the ability to stuff them for a loss. The Texans on third down. A perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. This will be third and 15. Savage. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. No gain at all on the play there. That brings up four. Well, that's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath by all means. Here now Shane Leckler, 41-year-old punter to kick it away. Back deep for the Colts is Quan Bray. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the end zone for a touchback. Before the offense gets going again, league-wide story here. You and I got a kick out of Juju Smith-Schuster post-game comments because he had a long touchdown, <laughs> and he said he kept looking over his shoulder because his Madden rating was only an 82 or an 83, thought he was going to get caught. Yeah, you can tell he's a youngster because us old folks, that's when the Satchel Page quote comes in. Don't look back. Someone might be gaining on you. <laughs> but I love that. I love the fact that he said, my rating, I, I thought I was faster than that, essentially. <laughs> well, guess what? The ratings get updated each week. Juju, you will be an 89 <laughs> starting next week. And by the way, your actual rating prior to, it was 88. Yeah, you were a little off, but bottom line, don't look back. And he's going to go down. The Texans come at him and able to bring him to the ground. Well, so much for setting the tone of the drive offensively. Giving up a big sack that loses that kind of yardage, not a great start. some tough running he's still wrangled down shy of the 15 only three yards on the catch it's third down 
I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs and you tend to stall them out when you do that. And some secondary help here for the defense in the nickel on third and long. Let's go! Out of the gun, Brissett. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. Pardon, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. The Colts send out their punter. Back deep for the Texans, Will Fuller. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. Fielded just inside the 20. That one in the books as a 64-yard punt. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10. Come up now with a clock showing three seconds to go here in the first. They'll start out on the ground. It's Lamar Miller. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. One quarter down. 7 nothing is our score. The NFL on EA Sports continues right after this message. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and it's Texans football as we get going in quarter number two. They face a second and seven to start things out. one up to about the 39 here it's a six yard run leaves him with about a foot or so here still to go to hit the marker with third down coming up even though they gave up more than they wanted to on that play it actually illustrates how well they bottled him up throughout the game because that was his longest run of this contest the offense on third down tonight they've been good three for four thus far they're looking at third in the nose of the football savage now to throw Oh, they would have gotten a conversion if he could hold on. Instead, the drop means it'll be fourth down. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. He's got to throw it better. Got to get more help. Obviously, one that should have been caught. They got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. Here's Shane Leckler now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. And the Colts getting ready to go. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here.
They'll try and start the drive here with Gore. And he is knocked down from the side, right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. So nothing there. I don't know that that's all in the back, though. you got to look at blocking there, don't you? I would agree with that totally. At some point, they have to win at the point of attack. Instead, it was the defense getting it done again and holding them to no gain. A second down throw for Brissett. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Dante Moncrief that time. And it's third down. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here. But that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open. And this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. Third down, Brissett. Looking deep for Hilton. And he can't quite intercept it. Zone coverage, free safety was there. Couldn't come up with it, and now it's fourth down. How about this offense already feeling good about themselves with a touchdown already in their first drive? It's certainly come out firing, even though that one was incomplete. With the 7-0 lead, more apt to take a shot like that downfield? Hey, you're one to the good. Go ahead and try pressure advantage. The Colts send out their punter, standing right on his own five-yard line. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Just a yard return there after a punt of 49. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And here comes the Texans now. And this is their third drive. Maybe the focus right now, not so much on points, but getting their first first down. And when you start off a game, you don't even think that's an issue, do you? But you go a drive, a second drive, no first down, that becomes an issue. Now you got to think about, okay, what type of play calling do I have to do to get us in a spot to pick that first one up? here on first down. Griffin's got it, middle of the field. And heavy contact. He is knocked down hard. Right there at the 43. They get 14 on that one. Good for a Houston first down. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to spring the tight end free downfield for the completion. fake here on first down wide open receiver complete and he's brought down Texans passing game in rhythm right now picking up another first and this offense can get their tight ends involved they can move the football here a nice route able to look it in and picks up the first down his way forward here for a good little game. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. Here's Savage now on second. He gets this one to Bruce Ellington. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. Let's go! 
They'll run it now out of the gun. And only a yard this time as he's taken down right around the 26. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far. And after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going. And really, the offensive line not helping him much. They'll run it here. This is Deontay Foreman. They only got a couple on that one, so not a ton of help. They'll have a third and eight forthcoming. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you've got to continue to try and run and try and keep the defense honest. You mean or else they'll just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. The Texans on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and eight. Savage from the shotgun snap. And he fires one that's intercepted. It's the rookie out of Florida, Quincy Wilson. Oh, man, partner, this is something cornerbacks love to do, and that's outthink a quarterback. If you get a sense that they're going to throw a quick out route or a quick hitch, you can just lay back an extra yard or two, but then really put your foot in the turf and drive on the football. And here I think he baited the quarterback into the throw and made it pay off. The Colts now, their offense works their way back onto the field. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize it hasn't worked <laughs> go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the go. excitement area. First down, Brissett. And his throw is going to be incomplete. T.Y. Hilton, the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. Now switching topics for a second. You know it was strange watching the Monday night game and seeing Jamal Charles in Kansas City, but not in a Chiefs jersey. And after the game, he was asked about it. He said it felt weird. It looked weird. It was strange all the way around, but what a nice ovation he received from the Kansas City fans when he made an appearance in the game because so classy are they welcoming him back, realizing what he did for their franchise. And they did part amicably, all right? There was a reason why he was gone. But he had a fumble early that Marcus Pierce picked up and ran back for a touchdown. But the best thing for him that night, even though they lost, went over 10,000 yards from scrimmage in his career. Ten active players have done that prior to him, and he still holds the yards per carry average for NFL history. 5.4 yards every time he touches the ball in a running play. The Colts on third down, just one for three thus far. This will be third and five. Here we go. We're set now. And this is going to be incomplete. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. The Colts send out their punter, standing just about on his own goal line. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Good open field tackling there. A 50-yard punt followed by just a one-yard return. And possession will switch hands first and ten. Now the Texans offense, they head back out to do battle here. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And, of course, they'd like to forget the ending, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. They begin with a run by Miller. And an alley to run. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. Give him 10 yards there, and about by the nose of the football, he's going to have a first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. Here we go now. 3-19. 3-19. 
Here's Savage on first down. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. Well, that will give us a second to discuss some trade news from this last week. Jimmy Garoppolo, he's headed east to west to San Francisco. Your thoughts? Surprised. Big time surprised because many people thought that San Francisco was going to wait until next year and either draft a quarterback or pick someone up in free agency. Instead, they make the bold move here getting Garoppolo. And I like it for San Francisco because they could have their quarterback in the future. They could tag him at the end of the year and keep him around for another year while they continue to evaluate. Or he could still be another trade for them down the road as they evaluate quarterbacks coming out of college next year. So, so many different things. But Jimmy Garoppolo looks like he'll get his chance now to be a starting quarterback in the NFL. The Texans on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and 10. Here we go. Green, 39. Operating from the gun, Savage. On the right side, this is Miller. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. Here's Shane Leckler now as he's on to punt for Houston. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. Yeah, that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. And we take some time to spotlight T.Y. Hilton now. Second quarter, a guy like him, no catches, so that's the surprising part. But they're winning, so maybe they've been able to do some other things effectively, I guess. And they found other ways, haven't they? Because the receivers will tell you, offense needs to run through us, but they're managing to get it done in this ball game without having to actually do that. I wouldn't expect him to stay silent for the rest of the game. Though. Yeah, yeah you got to think that his first catch is coming at some point. Come on, let's go. Right right Play fake, Brissette. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. Well, we got a little second here, so I want to give some week eight kicker love. There were a lot of field goals made in the NFL this past week. I think we had six guys that made four or more. Well, let's call them out, and let's start with your friend from ah, Georgia Tech. Harrison Bunker. Yeah, he was five of five. They had Matt Prater, five for five. Kai Forbath, four of four. Mike Nugent missed one, but he was still four for five. <laughs> Matt Bryant, four for four. And Steven Goskowski. Oh, he was the worst out of all of them. Four for six. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to give him a shout-out because, hey, and sometimes we forget how important these kickers are in these games. Exactly. As a colleague of ours, Rich Eisen, is fond of saying, kickers are people, too. Well, they obviously read man coverage their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what think. What do you mean by that? Yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route, probably thought he was going to take it upfield, and then he curls back inside for the completion. Brissett going deep for Moncrief. This is caught inside the 15. A huge play that time for the Colts. 52 yards. Well, we know he's got the speed there. He needed the speed and the hands. A great catch. And because of that speed, you have to respect it as a defender. So you have to either play off or make sure you're somehow in contact with him. And he's able to do exactly what you said. Use the speed to his advantage and go up and get the football. That's a big time play right there. Let's go. On the handoff, it's Gore. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Here we go. 
They'll stick to the ground game with Gore. No dice this go around. He's hit behind the line and taken down. They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. I think there's one element that just keeps increasing on defense in the NFL, and that's speed. They want it at every position, and we just saw there some linebackers can go sideline to sideline, run past that trash, go past people, and make tackles near the sidelines. Well, not only near the sideline, but also in the backfield there for the loss. The Colts on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and nine. From the shotgun, it's Brissett, and he's unable to haul it in, so it falls incomplete over the middle third of the field, and that brings up fourth. Right up to that point, I was about to say, he's had a pretty good half catching the football, but let's just be honest about it. He should have caught that one. And he knows that. That was one right in his bread basket and one he normally catches. Terry now ought to try the field goal for the Colts. And Vinatieri's kick is good. And the lead moves to 10 zip. Let's face it, when Adam Vinatieri actually misses a field goal, that's when we're surprised. We're not as all shocked that he made this one. Of course, he has the record 44 straight field goal makes. He closed out 2015 making 25 and then started 2016 with 19 in a row. Now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This one fielded at the five. Then he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. The Texans' offense now, they get set to head back onto the field. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. again to Miller. And this will go for five up to the 33. He had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. To throw on second down. Savage. And that's complete. It's Allington. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. That's good for a Texan first down. A 12-yard pickup. remain here in the first half. We're back to Houston after this timeout. A reminder coming up at halftime, Larry Ridley will join us from Orlando with our halftime report, but business to take care of before that. So the offense has it first and 10. Here we go now. Three, 19. 
Here's Savage. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. So the pass goes awry there, but boy, week eight of the NFL, three passers, they did not have any throws go awry. That was Matthew Stafford, Deshaun Watson, Russell Wilson. All three were over 400 yards. Yeah, absolutely scintillating in performances. The only downside for Matthew Stafford, didn't pay off in touchdown passes. He's the only player in NFL history to have two 400-yard two games and no touchdown passes in them. Now, Deshaun Watson, Russell Wilson, they rang the bell four times each throwing the football downfield, but what a day. Three guys over 400. A lot of footballs in the air, a lot of excitement for us fans. Yeah, but Watson and Wilson were going head-to-head. -head. Stafford lost, so the 400-yard passers went one and two. Yeah, that, that, that doesn't sound right, <laughs> does it? If doesn't. you throw for over 400 yards, you should get a W out of it. Found his target, it's Anderson. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. Now Savage. His throw incomplete. Will Fuller was the intended target, and that'll bring up second down. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. Second down here after the incomplete pass. to throw again. Savage throwing the out route incomplete. That's Anderson. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. I like how they work the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're going to give him that much space, he's not going to catch the football. He's going to run away from you a little bit. And that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. So the offense takes the timeout and they are back out and ready to rock. Fresh set of downs here. Throwing again is Savage. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back complete. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. And now inside the red zone, the offense will operate. Now inside the red zone, Savage. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. It came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. All right, here we go. 319. 319. Throwing again. Savage. And got his man. It's caught. Touchdown, Houston. DeAndre Hopkins from 13 yards out. And the Texans have cut it to within a score. 
The way this one was going, you just got the sense they needed something before half. They've at least got something on the board now. Still trailing, but a good sign. That takes me back to our preseason tour of NFL camps. You remember we, we talked with that one coach who said his emphasis this year was scoring in the last two minutes yep. of a half, heading into the locker room? This hits it right there. Take that momentum, take that good feeling, and take it to the locker room, regroup, and start over. They got it here. They did indeed. A lot of football, a full half to be played. The 10 play drive that time. And the result, a Houston touchdown. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. <laughs> and he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. We focus our attention now on T.Y. Hilton as he gets ready to head back onto the field. Second quarter here, he has only one catch, but they have the lead. you got to think, though, he's going to be more involved at some point. That's what you would expect, but sometimes what defenses do to take away a player of his magnitude, it costs them in other areas, and right now, with them losing, they may have to change their focus, and maybe he will open up a little bit more as the game goes on. Yeah, well, so far, just the single catch. set to throw on first. Looking sideline incomplete. Kamar Aiken, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. Now we got a second. Let's peek back to the Thursday night game. Baltimore, Miami, 40 to nothing. Baltimore, who stole the show for you? The Cat. Because the game, the game certainly did not, but the cat did, and you know exactly what I'm talking about. I do. That cat gets on the field. What was it? Third quarter of the game, yeah, somewhere in that neighborhood. And I love the moves. Even though no one was really pursuing, he was letting you know, hey, if you try and catch me, I'll juke you left and right. And showed some good straight line speed too when he made a beeline line over the sideline there. No doubt about it. It was definitely the cat. Dolphins could have used the cat, but a little spooky a few days before Halloween with him running out or well, around it, the field. It wasn't a black cat. That's true. Okay, so, That's so true. that helped a little bit. And I understand that Ravens employees have adopted the cat, named the cat Ray, short for Ravens. So what do you call that? A perfect ending. man it's Williams and he'll get up to the 43 yard line we have hit halftime still two more quarters to go we'll take a timeout we'll be back after this you're watching the NFL and it's on EA Sports it's in the game thanks Brandon and welcome to the EA halftime report let's take a look back at the first half the Texans trail at home at halftime the Colts have come in and look good as the road team and we'll just keep trying to play hard and maintain the lead going forward. All right, let's get it going. Let's roll those first half highlights. Colts with the ball midway through the first. They run as this is Marlon Mack. And after a five-minute drive, we've got a touchdown. Texans have it early in the second as they take a 7-0 lead. Griffin's by himself here, and he ends up at the 39-yard line before he stopped on the play. the 30. Miller's wide open, able to make the grab, and he won't be brought down until he makes it to the 13-yard line. Texans later on the drive. Hopkins got nobody around him on the catch, and 13 yards later, he'll go in for the score. Texans now down by just three. That'll do it for us here at EA Sports Studios. Let's get back out to Brandon and Charles for the call of the second half. Brandon.
So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. comes a Houston offense as they get set to take over here. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors, but overall, I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up, and we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. Second half begins with a run from Miller. Even with the nice move, can't go very far. Stop short of the 30. A gain of three, second down. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. Miller running right and there is nowhere for him to cut back as he's taken down in the backfield they'll lose a yard and it brings up third well Brandon so much for halftime adjustments they still can't get anything going on the ground it may be time to loosen things up and start flinging it around a little bit The Texans on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and nine. Hey, hey, hey. From the gun, here's Savage. The Colts are going to get him. Down he goes. These strong safeties, some people may not realize it. It's really like an extra linebacker, right? It really is because they're hybrids. Half linebacker, half defensive back. The linebacker in him on that play emerged. Here's Shane Leckler now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. Taking it about the 36. That'll go as a 46-yard punt with a return of seven. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. Here's the Colts now as they get ready for their first possession on offense of the second half. They were able to get the ball back here, didn't surrender any points. Now they'll look to add to that lead. Now how about the boost the defense gave them? Going right out on the field, shutting them down, not giving up any points, and turning the ball back over. They want to do their part now and show them a little respect and some <laughs> gratitude by scoring some points. And to get a little more cushion. They'll start on the ground with Gore. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. Again, it's Gore. Room to run past midfield. Oh, and now he bowls him over. And they do finally get him at the 12. A big play there for Indy. And even 50 yards. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them.
First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Here's Mack. And he's brought down. 11 more on that one and another first down. Well, how many times do we say in this game that speed kills and it does it in so many different ways? In this case, you got a back who's quick and shifty, can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary, and that led to a really nice gain. down somewhat awkwardly here and a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. Foul. Face mask. Defense. The officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a 5-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now, it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. A fresh set of downs, and they're at the one. First and goal. Let's go. One, nine. One, nine. Staying on the ground with Mack. And this one will wind up with him losing yardage. Back to the four-yard line. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Did your high school have that saying, push them back, push them back, cheer? I was a kicker. Well, it's, it certainly worked. Didn't matter if we were kickers or not. That one worked, didn't it? They pushed him back at his last snap of the ball, and boy, they created a nice play for themselves. Would they lose three on that yeah, one? Yeah, from the one back to the four. Ball spotted at the four. It's second and goal. Goal. And he'll be stopped about a yard shy of the goal line after a pickup of about three. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense? Was that five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive. And like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. The offense on third down, just one for five to this point. They're looking at a third and goal here. They'll try and pick up the first with Gore. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. Now, this feels like old school football because this has turned into a good old-fashioned goal line stand. So on offense, what do you do now? Do you decide to run it or throw it if you go for it on fourth down? Terry now ought to try to field goal for the Colts. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. And Vinatieri's kick is good. And the lead stretches to six here. It's 13-7. So it's only three points on this opening drive of the third quarter. And even though that stretches out the lead, Charles, I think you'd have to consider this a win for the defense, no? Couldn't agree more, Brandon. That offense got themselves in prime position to really open up this ball game, but the drive stalled out. And yeah, three points is very easy to get back in today's NFL. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. 
The Texans offense now, they get set to head back on the field here. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. down throw coming savage underneath for miller and he'll be brought down right at the 30 here it's a gain of five and that'll make it a second down i know most of the time when the ball's in the air you're thinking wide receiver tight end but running backs they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays second down to the offense needing five yards Gun, Savage. And his throw is going to be incomplete. The Pro Bowler, DeAndre Hopkins, the intended receiver. And that'll make it third down. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. The Texans on third down. Not quite 50%. Four for nine. This will be third and five. From the gun, Savage. The hook up on the right side to Hopkins. And he gets this up to the 34 out of bounds there. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. I think the training and practice broke down on that play because he simply didn't run the route deep enough to get to the first down marker, despite what was a really nice catch and toe tap on the sideline. Yeah, that's third down 101. you got to go to the marker, know where it is. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. And no return here. This one's going inside the 15 to the 12-yard line. And the Colts coming out now. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. down throw for Brissett. Pressure gets to him and down he goes. Back at the four-yard line. Well, if an offense is going to throw the ball in this part of the field, any pass rusher will tell you that's his favorite part. Gets a chance to get out to the quarterback. It's almost like a reverse red zone. They can create points using their defense, and this time they take their man down. Second down, this is Gore. And not much there as he gets it up to about the five-yard line. And they only get a yard back there. They'll be left with a third down and long. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. The Colts on third down. They've had their troubles, just one for six. This is third and 17. Now a carry for Mack. And he gets it up to the 10-yard line here. Call it a gain of five. Fourth down now. Well, they got off the field on third down. An excellent job, an excellent defensive series. We always talk about adjustments and usually only at halftime. But the best teams adjust series to series. And on that series, they adjusted so well that they got the job done in fine style. The Colts send out their punter. He's been terrific so far. Fielded just inside the 30. He's still on his 
his feet. And when it's said and done, it's a 58-yard punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. And now out comes Houston. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Play fake to Miller. Now Savage. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Griffin. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. The pass for negative yardage, obviously no good. Maybe he shouldn't have thrown it, or maybe he shouldn't have caught it. I think we were seeing it at the same time, weren't we? Maybe you let that one go, right? Because you can see the lost yardage about to develop. But that goes against every instinct of a receiver. They're taught to catch everything. So it's really hard to be mad at him and yell at him for trying to make that play. All right, here we go. Green, 39. Green. They go play action with Miller. Now it's Savage. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Jabal Sheard. Not dropping into coverage. He comes on the blitz and takes him down for a loss of nine. Well, it was second long, now it's third and even longer. They're going in the wrong direction here. Because they're moving them exactly the way they want to, but you're exactly right. Definitely going in the wrong direction for the offensive guys. So after the sack of Savage, the Texans with a third and long fourth coming. Operating from the gun, Savage. And able to catch it on the left sideline, but they're going to rule him out of bounds. So it'll be incomplete, certainly one they'd like to have back as it brings up fourth down. And we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. Here's Shane Leckler now, as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. Six-yard boot, but just 36 following a pretty decent return of 10 yards. The Colts offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. Toss. It's goal. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Well, you had to punt on your first drive, and on the first play of the second drive, you end up going backwards. I would dare say they need something good to happen right here, right now. Defense in a good spot. Let's see how the offense responds with a second and 13 now. Here we go. Now a handoff for Gore. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. One yard officially on the pickup, and it'll leave him with a third and 11. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action. Hit them over the top. Let's go. On third down, Brissett. Throw left side complete. It's Doyle. And he's finally taken down, but not before getting across midfield and across the 45-yard line. 
So there on that play, offensively, they ran the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage. So as a former DB, how tough is it to defend that? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to talk to your other coverage guys and let them know that that receiver's crossing from your zone to the next zone. He's coming your way. Make sure you have him. And then when the ball is actually thrown, secure the tackle. When they're moving on crossing routes, if you miss a tackle, it usually results in a big play. They go play action here on first down. It's caught on the right side, Williams. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 12 more yards there and another first down. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fellow runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. So here we go, first and 10 now. They run. It's Gore. And now running right through it. So he got free of one tackle but couldn't do a whole lot else. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Tough day. Tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. Brissett now on second down. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Three quarters in the books. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Houston, it's the Colts. They've got control of the football. They also have the lead as we start the fourth. And the next snap coming inside the red zone here. Back to the workhorse today. It's Gore. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Now, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely. You want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Second down, Brissett. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. So he can't hang on. And as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know. But you're going to get hit anyways. Might as well hold on to the ball. Well, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. Not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. We're set from the gun on third. And that's caught by Moncrief. Indianapolis touchdown. Dante Moncrief from six yards away. And the Colts are able to grow their lead. And all about timing there on that short slant, Charles. Exactly right. That was timed up so well. The route, the throw, touchdown. And they'll get set here looking for the two-point conversion. Here we go. Brand 38. Brand 38. Throwing. Brissett. And this one's caught. And their fourth quarter lead grows by a couple more.
And around the goal line, especially on two-point tries, sometimes the QB's best friend is that big target the tight end. I love how you described it because you know he's going to have some length and some catch radius as well as a big body to keep people away from the football. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. And the Texans set to come onto the field. And right now, these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with them punting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Savage. And that is incomplete. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. So second and 10 here. Three, 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 three. Now let's go. Three, three, three. Ah. To throw again. Savage. Ellington has it. Middle of the field. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs, as we just saw there. And on third down, the Colts have added an extra defensive back. Flooding the passing lanes. 319! Savage from the shotgun snap. It's hauled in by Ellington. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. That's good for a Texan first down, a 12-yard pickup. Fourth quarter, every drive so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You got the first one for the second one to even matter. Now the offense lining up first and ten. Again throwing, it's Savage. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Well, too much oomph, too much mustard there on that pass. They really turned it loose, didn't they? Really cut loose with that one, sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. 10 yards still left on second down. Throwing again, Savage, and he'll be brought down by the Colts. Henry Anderson in there to drop him, and it'll be a loss of about eight. And I know it seems like we say this a lot in broadcast booths, but a quarterback can hold on to the football too long in these situations. I think he did right there. Oh, I agree with you totally. Sometimes you have to understand situations. Get rid of the football, save some yardage to make it less to gain for the next down. Instead, he was so hipped on ball security, he held on to it and took a big sack. So after the sack of Savage, the Texans with a third and long fourth coming. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards, back to the 33. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. 
We just saw another example of how the defense is winning this game. Really at the point of attack, the offensive line is just getting pushed around. I think now as a play caller, you've got to give them a little bit of help. Maybe you keep your tight ends a little bit more. Maybe the running backs help you a little bit with the pass blocking. But you've got to help them get some confidence because you can't abandon the play calling right now. Here's Shane Leckler now as he's on to punt for Houston. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Gets this to the 24 for a gain of four. Second down throw for Brissett. Got a man over the middle. It's Williams. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target. Guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. The Colts on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities. Three for nine. Here it's third and three. Let's go. Brand, now it's Gore. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Just a one-yard pick up there, and it'll be fourth down. Now that was a big-time play by the defense. They as well knew where the first down line was, and they didn't let them get anywhere near it. The Colts send out their punter as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Fair catch called. It's taken in right at the 20-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Texans will take over with a first and ten. Tom Savage ready to lead his troops back onto the field. And the stats on the screen tell the story. A great start. This defense, they made some good adjustments, though. He's fallen off since. You have to like what they did at the half, but you also have to like the fact that they hung in there. Despite the fact they had a tough first half, he was locked in, right? Rocking and rolling. They came out, made their adjustments, got their confidence back. Now they're causing him all sorts of trouble. There's Savage on first down. Now the pressure comes and he goes down. Just inside the 10, back at the 9. John Simon from his outside linebacker spot. He comes up to drop him for a loss of 10. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Just 
throw on second down to Savage. And this turns into disaster. He's not going to get forward progress. That'll be a safety. Well, there is still time to recover from this. It remains a two-score game, even with the two points there. But let's just say things not trending in the right direction. I like that phrase. I'm going to say it along with you. Things are definitely not trending in the right direction. They needed something on that drive. Instead, they gave up two points and a lot of hope. So after that safety, now a free kick situation forthcoming as they punt it away from the 20. This is taken around the 12. <laughs> and now Indianapolis set to take the field. They're out in front last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. yards on the pickup there and it'll leave him with a second and three. Grant is all about pace and tempo now for them. They've got the advantage so I'm going to put musical terms for you. You don't want to go prestissimo. That's too quick, too lively, right? But you also don't want to slow it down too much. You don't want to go lento. What you really want to be is moderato. Uh, nice and even, uh, nice and steady. Get those gains and close out the game. I think that chicken parm from last night's gone to your head. <laughs> And this carry number 20 for Frank Gore. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. Give the Colts 13 yards at a first down. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. Now a play fake here on first down. And complete to Moncrief over the middle. And they'll get him to the ground, but he got all the way down to the 30-yard line. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Still throwing the football here, even with the big lead. Yeah, I know you and I came up in a different era, and we think about sportsmanship and all that. Other people think about fantasy points and getting their numbers. <laughs> That's all they care about right now. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Play action. Brissett. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Zach Cunningham in from his linebacker spot. He's able to drop him for a loss of about 10. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. Yeah, blink of an eye. That happened fast and a big sack. with Brissett. Under pressure again, and down he goes again. 
the amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. Here we go. Right at from the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And the pressure gets to him again. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. The Colts send out their punter as he's on to kick it away. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. Heading out is the Texans offense as they get set to take over here. And the last time they had the football, they surrendered two points on the safety. Uh, you don't want to do that one again. No, not at all. It's almost like a bases clearing double, isn't it? Give up a couple of runs. Sure. <laughs> just, <laughs> mess, just messes things up for you offensively. But now they've got to go ahead, take it, set it aside, and move forward. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. On first and ten, Savage. He's going to air one out. It's caught inside the 25. Touchdown, Houston. Lamar Miller, 72 yards. And the Texans cut into that lead. No, we're not cheering. No, we're not rooting. But I am excited about this. I know you are, too. We got a ball game again after that big-time strike. Big-time strike, and you are right. Don't go anywhere yet. This thing's not done. Big two-point conversion attempt still to come. From the gun, Savage. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. A very pivotal two-point try that does not go their way. Now it's a big uphill battle for the rest of the fourth quarter. The attempt was to try and make it a one-score game, right? Touchdown, get two, and now you've tied it up. Instead, they don't get it, still down 10. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And this is going to be taken in by the Colts. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. 
I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. Inside the 40 to the 39 yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. I know the game's not over, but there's got to be a sense of satisfaction right now for the guy carrying the football a bunch today. 99 yards, and he has enough time to go over the century mark. Well, you got to give it to him again, right? Yeah, there's no doubt about it. You're not worried about losing yardage here. You're not worried about any of that. You just want to get him to the promised land for every runner 100 yards or more in a game. Completes it to Moncrief, left side. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. That one for Indianapolis, resulting in 15 yards and a fresh set of downs. Offense comes to the line now, first and 10. Here's Gore, and he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Brandon, it's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. And they'll try to squeeze in one more play here before the two-minute warning. Time for a break. We'll come back to wrap this one up after this. So the Colts in possession of the football as we get you reset. And no doubt what they're looking to do is just salt away the final couple of minutes and escape with a win. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. The Colts on third down. They've had a lot of chances, but not much success, converting only three times. This is third and 11. On, They'll run with Mack. And now with 152 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. From the left hash, it's a 42-yard attempt. Yeah. 
And Vinatieri's kick is good. And that will stretch the lead up to 13. So they settle for just the three there, but clearly anything helps when you're trying to salt one away here in the fourth. Without a doubt, I think a touchdown would have been the final nail. But three does give them some breathing room and lets them build up a little cushion. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Here comes Bruce Ellington on the return. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. And now out comes Houston. down savage caught it's Ellington and he's able to get out to the 32 brought down there a gain of six there on first the clock still runs we're at 90 seconds now they'll fake the handoff with savage caught left side Hopkins and he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. Give him 30 yards there. The first down throw coming. Savage. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. He was looking to get it to his running back, Lamar Miller. And now it's second down. That was a nice catch, but unable to stay in bounds. And remember, it wasn't a wide receiver who works on that all the time. I was going to say, he, he likes to get the ball handed to him. Now, don't get me wrong, he's part of the passing game as well, but maybe a little out of his comfort zone there. Yeah, he might want to have a few words to say to us about that later, but I am still going with you on that one. Wide receivers work on a little bit more. But not the position they want to be in. Still a very, very small chance here, but they almost need a miracle. Agreed. That means they've got to get it to the sidelines, get out of bounds, and preserve clock. Throwing again is Savage. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Anderson. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. Give him 30 yards there. And with just over 40 seconds now remaining, he gets up and spikes it. The intended receiver there, Allen, and it's second down. Savage wants to throw yet again. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. A great read, and it's picked off. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Obviously disappointing, but you had to go for broke here, down two scores. So that forced you to make some throws you definitely wouldn't want to make. And I think this interception is going to pretty much write an end to this one. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. 
I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, that <laughs> weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive in with a kick, <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. The D can only stop it one more time as they take the knee. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. final kneel down here as it comes inside the 42nd mark and that should be enough to put this one on ice. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted, no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gunn. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. So long from Houston.